All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So first of all, thank you all so much for joining. My name is Andrew Grismore. I am a senior consultant for 27 Virtual and welcome to our webinar with VMware surrounding securing the modern data center with VMware network security. With me here as well is Brian Healy, and he's going to be taking over in just a second. But first, let's just go over a couple of things before we get started. First of all, this is a webinar, so as you guys can tell, your mics are muted. But if you want to participate and ask questions, we highly encourage it. Just utilize the Q&A box as we go along, and Brian and I will be monitoring that box, answering questions for you as we, as we go along. And if it's something that we uh, feel should be answered out loud, we'll go ahead and do that. We might also type out that answer for you. Second of all, Something that's really important is that at the end of this webinar, when you close out the Zoom window, you're actually going to see a pop-up come up after the meeting and it will be a survey. And if you fill out that survey, which we please encourage you to do, it gives us feedback and understanding of how we can do better. But if you fill that out, you actually have a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card. And we've got a couple of those to give away. So definitely make sure at the end of the webinar, when you close out the Zoom, that you fill out that short survey at the end and we'll remind you one more time as we get toward the end of the webinar. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Brian, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Say hello and uh, get this thing going. All right, wonderful. Thank you very much, Andrew. Yeah, I would second that. Please, at the end, fill out the survey because uh, I'd really hate to have another Amazon gift card all to myself because nobody wanted <laughs> to do it. So. Uh, yeah, definitely. We, we, we encourage the feedback. I think it'll be a, a good use of your time. I want to also extend a, a bit of thanks to everybody to join yet another virtual conference here for the past number of months. We appreciate the opportunity that you're giving us today to discuss how VMware is approaching securing the modern data center. And over the next few minutes here that I'm going to spend with you, we're going to look at how we can simplify the data center segmentation and do this without requiring the traditional complicated network changes, how we're going to give you visibility beyond that perimeter firewall, enable simple and consistent policy, and all while we give you distributed scale. Please put your questions in the Q&A panel. We'll get them answered either as we go along or there towards the end, we'll do some verbally. So at, at VMware, our, our approach to security is essentially to leverage your infrastructure to secure your business. We have many unique vantage points across all of the different control points in a data center where we build in security capabilities. And it's these capabilities that help unify the tools and the teams and encourage them to work together across not only security, but IT and operations. Because focusing specifically on the network control point, we all know the traffic inside the data center is just inherently complex. Well over 80% of traffic inside the data center is east-west. And as applications change, this is only going to grow. The traditional approach to securing a data center is to use a number of physical firewall appliances to secure the traffic. So to do this, we know that network changes have to occur to get that traffic from the endpoints funneled in and out of multiple physical appliances. And with the amount of traffic, trying to send it all from the data center to the perimeter just leads to performance and scale issues. So what ends up happening is inspection and visibility just become huge compromises with a number of trade-offs and many blind spots. And it is definitely compounded by the growth in traffic these physical appliances can only scale so far before you have to you know, add another pair or more of them into the infrastructure and carve up traffic, which it's a compounding effect of complicating policy management. And this approach does nothing to prevent lateral movement within the east-west layer two security zones. So VMware, we're taking a different approach to solving these data center security challenges with our software-based approach to network security. 
First, we take the layer seven stateful firewall and IPS functionality, and we distribute it in software throughout the data center. So in effect, each one of your workloads gets its own firewall and IPS. So we can do this in software without requiring any of those traditional complicated uh, approaches. Our physical network changes don't have to occur. We don't require overlays. IPS doesn't require a number of network tap configurations to get traffic in and out for analysis. And traffic doesn't have to hairpin to any central location with all of those physical appliances. And you definitely don't need additional virtual machine firewalls with their own traffic complexities and cost deployed on each one of your hosts to do this. Once the distributed firewall and IPS are enabled, we give you simple policies you can manage from central location. And because we're in the hypervisor, we have access to all of that rich context and metadata for each one of those workloads that are running. So we can create policies based on this context and don't have to default back to relying upon policies by IP addresses. So for example, we can say that the workloads we've designated as our development workloads can't talk to production. Or if you've got compliance needs, maybe PCI cannot talk to non-PCI workloads. So as these workloads are created, they automatically get security policies applied. If for some reason these workloads move around the data center, maintenance events and the like, the policies are gonna follow those workloads. And just as important, when those workloads are decommissioned, you shut down a VM, application's done, we don't need it anymore. The policies are automatically removed. No one has to go out to a physical appliance and change or remove a firewall policy. So these distributed capabilities with the firewall and IPS enable a simple process to secure data center traffic. The first step, leverage the layer seven stateful firewall capabilities to provide segmentation of traffic in your workloads. You can create simple segmentation zones. This gives you things like guardrails inside your data center and prevent the lateral movement that often occurs. Second, once you've done that, we can layer on IPS wherever it's needed to analyze traffic between workloads to look for that known bad that's out there. And third, when you're ready, we can add advanced threat prevention capabilities to detect and prevent those more sophisticated threats and anomalies, giving you visibility beyond the perimeter firewall. So in addition to IPS, the advanced threat features include two additional components. First, we give you sandboxing that uses both a combination of static as well as dynamic analysis techniques to identify malware and those malicious documents that may be moving in and around your network. The second thing is we had network traffic analysis that identifies unwanted net network behavior and identifies anomalies that could be occurring. Together, these allow us to detect those threat actors that are attempting to break into a network, move laterally, and maybe even exfiltrate information. And normally doing all of this is a lot of data and a lot of analysis points that you have to deal with. Part of what we offer is that automatic correlation of the threats and anomalies that we see from the different locations within your network and give your security analysts a high level blueprint of all the ongoing intrusions and clearly align them to the MITRE attack framework. So the net result is this is gonna reduce the time it would take the SOC to perform the same correlation and validation tasks by hand. Now, as I, said, as I said, we align these things to the MITRE attack framework. Working together, our firewall and advanced threat capabilities cover all the tactics in the MITRE attack framework from the initial access and lateral movement, all the way to command and control and data exfiltration. Now we can leverage all of the network security capabilities I just mentioned to secure the modern data center. 
we can quickly segment your infrastructure, again, without complicated network changes to give you your compliance and auto requirements. We can layer on advanced threat prevention to give you visibility beyond the perimeter and correlate automatically and validate threats. Policies, as you'll see in a moment in the demo, is, is very simple to deploy and can be fully automated to simplify management. And whether you're on-prem or as often as the case, a combination of clouds, we provide consistent security for all of your workloads. So to highlight a few of these, I'm gonna switch over to a quick demo. And this is gonna walk through a number of the capabilities and features of NSX to help you quickly achieve segmentation and simplify the policy management, as I mentioned. Okay, so looking at the demo now, we've broken down segmentation of your infrastructure into a very prescriptive process where you can start with more course policies, those guardrails I mentioned, and move to more granular over time. The first place to start for those quick wins in segmenting your data center and to definitely reduce the attack surface is to create course segmentation rules based on things like production, development, test, or you know maybe you've got uh, zone one, zone two, tier one, two, three, based on your, uh, your current security posture. So we can leverage for these policies, your existing VLANs and segments and not require you to go out and do things like changing IP addresses or subnets or work more, move rather workloads around to accomplish this. So in this example, we are going to block our production and development workloads from talking. Now I'm highlighting a couple of different ways that we can approach this. The first is we can create a source that says our production workloads that are on our production segment, your existing segments, in, excuse me, in VLANs can be included automatically. For the workloads, I'm leveraging, we dig in this a little bit, I'm leveraging that context that we get for all the VMs automatically, and I'm including all of the VMs with a name, a virtual machine name, that starts with prod. So we get that context from the hypervisor, it's exposed, we're able to quickly and simply make policies that leverage those capabilities. And it's very similar for our development side. So the layer seven stateful firewall is fully distributed. Like I said, we, we're not adding on any additional uh, VM firewalls. It's all distributed in the, in the hypervisor and every workload automatically gets its own firewall. And that firewall also sees each and every packet that goes in and out of a workload. This gives us an extremely unique position to leverage the context about the workload where we can secure and simplify policy because we don't have to rely on the physical network or IP address. We can give you a very quick and easy segmentation tool. I mentioned PCI earlier. If you have some kind of compliance requirements, here's an example of where we are saying that I've got a group, a dynamic group that definition says every VM in my environment that I have tagged with PCI is automatically gonna get included. So I can expose that and now create just one policy that says I'm going to allow PCI to talk to PCI regardless of where they are in the data center. And the subsequent policies applying to PCI say, we're not going to allow PCI to effectively talk to non-PCI workloads. Again, leveraging the context we talked about. So we're gonna drop those, those packets as well. You could leverage another approach based on whatever guardrails or segmentations you require. This could be zone one, zone two, tier one, tier two, things of that nature. So at this point in the process, we've created a simple and powerful segmentation outcome. Basically that step one I mentioned before. Now we can turn our attention based on the requirements for more granular policy to tighter controls around our applications. One such example that's becoming more and more common here in the, in the past you know, seven, eight months is more and more people working remotely. So we can create a policy 
for our remote workers that are using virtual desktops, it says that our virtual desktops cannot talk to another virtual desktop. So this policy, just one rule, would prevent the movement of malware in the network from an infected virtual desktop infrastructure. So this one, just like you saw with, with the, uh, the PCI example, I'm taking and I'm leveraging the tags that we get. This could be a name. It could be a number of the capabilities that we get from the context of the VM and creating a policy that includes all of those automatically. So we can do this with a number of automation solutions that makes it simple to get the policies up and running. So as a VDI instance comes into existence, policies are automatically applied. And when they shut down that desktop and it goes away, the policies are removed. So for our application that our developers are coming into access, we can go a step further and say that we want to create a policy that's going to allow our remote workers to connect to their development application. Here, I'm creating a policy that says, if we have a user that comes in on a virtual desktop and they're part of an active directory group called private cloud developers, we're going to allow them access to their development VMs, in this case, the web and DB. So we're effectively using identity firewalling to permit the right users to the correct workloads. And that's done with a, a fairly straightforward and simple policy. For the application that our developers are accessing, we can create a policy that covers all of their app tiers. In this case, I'm allowing anything coming in to the web tier over ADN 443. I'm allowing the web to talk to database. Again, in the sample app, it's using 8443. This could be you know, 3306 or any number of you know, typical database ports. And then anything else that tries to access it directly, we're gonna go ahead and drop. So we've provided the least amount of access possible using simple policies with dynamic groups. And this is gonna significantly reduce the attack surface of this application. So one last thing I wanna call out here is again, because we see every packet in and out of our workloads and we know the context of the workloads themselves, we make it easy to create an emergency policy in case some event happens that we need to control quickly. So this is that, that big red button you can push to create centrally and push out to the entire environment. This example is a simple one where we're blocking SMB v1 for something like a WannaCry attack. So we leverage in this case our layer seven inspection engine to block this specific traffic with this rule. And I can go one step further, again, back to the leverage in the context that we get from the workloads. I can create a group that says, if this VM has an operating system that starts with Windows, I want to apply it to this one and not something like a Linux workload where this particular vulnerability would not apply to. So this gets us that step one of segmenting our network. Now we can go further kind of into step two to enhance our security posture by looking for attack attempts against vulnerable software. Again, that known bad that's out there. And this is where we can leverage the distributed IDS and IPS of NSX. And like the distributed firewall, it resides in the hypervisor and sees all of the traffic. Each workload can have it applied based on what is required for your uh, security and compliance in, inside your company. So over here to the uh, events dashboard, you can quickly see the activities that are occurring in the environment. And we can see there are some incidents down here that uh, really we need to go check out and investigate. Here we see there is a specific event tied to a CVE. In this case, it looks like uh, our, our Drupal server in development was attacked by a, a Drupal Geddon exploit. So we can see based on this specific event, more of the context again that we can get within this distributed infrastructure. We can see the product that was affected. We don't require you to go and try to correlate IP addresses and look up names and stuff or go to vCenter or whatever other tool. 
we correlate all that information quickly and simply for you. So I can see with the click of the button, the number of VMs that were affected by this particular event. You can see three of them were impacted. We also expose the CVSS and there's a direct link to more details about the CVE for you to take a look at. Scrolling down a little bit more, we can see that we provide information around the attacker and the target, including the attack direction and the traffic flow, because sometimes depending on the attack, the, the traffic may be flowing back to the attacker in an exfiltration type event. We can see the last 14 days of this intrusion activity that matches this. I can click on here for a, a more complete timeline view of what's going on. And we'll go ahead and we'll scroll all the way back because I've run this a couple of times in the demo environment. So we can see that way back we had this attacker or our dot 150 endpoint reached out and tried to exploit a hole in the dot 101 workload. We can see that happened a couple of times. We can also see that 101, once it was compromised, then reached out laterally to 102 because they're on the same layer two network. And you can see that continues on and it, it tries to move laterally again to 201. So we didn't require any taps. We didn't require hairpin in the traffic and we can see the movement inside that same layer two network that traditional appliances likely would have missed. Giving you again, visibility beyond the perimeter. Now, like the distributed firewall, we can optimize our IDS IPS deployment even further customized to your environment and your requirements. So I can create profiles of signatures that I want to evaluate in the data center. So here I've narrowed down, in this case, the latest one from uh, just a couple of weeks ago, there's over 13,000 signatures that we downloaded. I've narrowed it down to 235 that'll be evaluated for my application servers. To do this, I can leverage the curated signature base that we get, and I can pick the products that I know are installed in my infrastructure today, and I can just narrow it down to that. Looking at another quick example here, say for VDI desktops, I can take a different approach by saying instead of based on CVS S, or products or attack types, I can look at the attack targets. And we know it's an endpoint, so it's a client-based attack. So here I'm just narrowing it down to things that affect client server and client endpoints. And this gets the total down to about 5,000. Once I've created these profiles of our curated signatures, I can then go and apply those to the relevant workloads that I want to evaluate. So in a couple of examples here, production and VDI, you can see I'm applying my database server signature profiles and app servers profiles to the same workload groups that we created before. So we don't require you to have effectively two separate things that you have to manage. We can leverage the same grouping, the same context. And same thing on our VDI. My VDI signature profile is only going to be applied and evaluated against those. So you see those profiles are created are applied to the same firewall groups we used earlier. And if I want to switch to prevent, I can make that change to the rule. And then I can go into the specific signatures within the profile to set the pre prevent actions to either drop or reject as a pro, now, for example, we're not going to automatically flip everything, all 5,000 signatures of EDI to, to prevent. There's some ones that are already baked in that are, that are set to standard uh, recommended approaches. You can go in and override based on those capabilities that you need and what's preferred for you. So you have that granular control. So that was a quick walkthrough of how you can achieve segmentation with simplified and distributed policies and get greater visibility. I'm gonna switch back over here and hand it back to Andrew. All right, Brian, thank you so much. That That's fantastic. And, you know, 
it really brings up the thought of how all of this came about. And that's really the one of the place that I want to start off today. So again, thanks everybody for being here. My name is Andrew Grismore. I'm with 27 Virtual and we are the ones who helped put this webinar together. And if you have not heard of 27 Virtual, let me just give you a quick rundown. We are one of the top partners for VMware, and we really focus in on services surrounding VMware products. And one of the things that I like to talk about the most and what I specialize in is this networking and security piece that we're talking about here. We offer services across the board with VMware, so all the way from the basics of vSphere, VDI, all the way through all the really, really cool stuff that you can do, like what we're seeing today, uh, moving toward automation, cloud native capabilities and VMware. But uh, of course, our focus is on security. So what I want to do is tell you guys a little story that comes from a couple of years ago when I attended one of my first VM worlds. And uh, this story begins with the fact that I was a VMware certified instructor as well. And we had this special day called VCI day, the day before VM world. And uh, I do miss that in-person VM world. So this was back in Vegas. And during that instructor day, uh, we had the ability to actually have a 20 minute or so uh, presentation and chat with Pat Gelsinger, the CEO of VMware. And it was right around the time where NSX was first starting to take off. And we got this, these capabilities with the distributed firewall. And uh, the distributed firewall really only had one day's worth of the five days of an NSX course. So uh, being an NSX instructor and having taught those classes, one of the questions that got asked to Pat was, well, what's going on with this whole security deal that we have going on in VMware? And he goes, you know what, that's a great question. And he told us, he told the group of instructors, he goes, I was having a conversation with one of the high level decision makers of a very large banking organization, multi -large, uh, multinational large bank, and you can imagine their data center footprint. And he said, well, as I chatted with this uh, high level executive at this bank, I asked them a couple of questions and he said, how many hardware vendors do you use for your server environment? And they said, you know, the typical insert X big player in that in that market, one or two of those vendors. We use a couple of those. And he goes, okay, great. What about from a networking standpoint? And same idea here. They use a couple of those uh, networking hardware vendors. And he goes, all right, fantastic. But what are you doing from a security standpoint? How many vendors are you dealing with there? And all of a sudden, you guys can probably imagine with all the different security companies out there with all different capabilities specifically designed to do certain things, they were looking at hundreds of security vendors to help protect their environment. And he said, and this was a few years ago, that VMware is just not doing enough. You know, we need to focus in on security and make this and just an automatic built-in part to everything that we do because hello, We've got all these workloads running on our hypervisor. We are VMware. We should have this be intrinsic to everything that we approach from a company. And the cool thing is, is that we've actually seen that develop here. And so I've been able to watch it from as a partner from the outside uh, looking in. And we've all seen each year at VMworld, the announcements and the additional capabilities that we get from a security standpoint. And now we see things like, uh, the, the role that Brian has, security specific roles within VMware. And that's where all this comes about. The cool thing is, is that I got to, again, become a part of 27 Virtual as a consultant, as a partner, and actually start implementing these security solutions, starting with the very basics of NSXV back in the day when it first came out from the very beginning. So we as, as 27 Virtual have had experience with this from the start, and we are the ones that are going to be able to come in and help you guys figure out how to take all that really cool stuff that Brian just showed off and make it applicable and tailored to your environment. So what we're seeing here as we move into uh, this slide is, you know, you may be starting at a place where your tooling and technology is somewhat antiquated in that 
you're still using, let's say, physical firewalling or operating system level firewalling to control your traffic. And at that point, it can become really difficult to do anything that you just saw because you need that additional capability where we don't care about the network, we care more about application functionality like we just saw. So we want to make sure that you have the tools and technology like the security capabilities from VMware that we just saw. We want to make sure that you understand how to implement this. And the way that I like to talk about the way that VMware has approached security is that we finally get to treat our virtual workloads like virtual workloads for the first time. We're not going to use our physical firewalls that were made and built for controlling traffic to and from physical machines, or same when it comes to trying to deal with uh, individual tools or operating system level tools. Those were built and made for physical servers to use. We now get the ability to treat our virtual workloads like VMs and containers and so forth for the first time now. So that requires a mindset shift. So you've got to have the processes in place and an understanding of how you can actually turn th these capabilities that you just saw into something that's a solid design, that's scalable, that's easy to use, and that you have the ability to manage and grow going forward. And then the last piece of this is making sure that the teams are arranged in a way where you're going to be able to continue to take advantage of that technology and process that we help you put in place. Because unfortunately, in the past, uh, we've come into customers that have tried to use the distributed firewall capabilities that you saw or, or evolve it and, and grow those capabilities. And because at a high level, the organization wasn't built from a people and team standpoint, uh, they weren't able to take it to the next level and really look and control that uh, at that east-west security that's out there. So we want to make sure that teams from a high level in the organization, as well as the people that are actually working on this in those teams, are not siloed and actually are sharing information back and forth. And what you'll see is that the more layers of virtualization that you put in, the more blended those roles start to become. And what we don't want to see is playing hot potato with who's going to enforce these rules, who's going to do the traffic discovery. We want it to be seamless as a part of that technology and the processes. So three really important pieces that we can help you uh, build out this security solution with. So that's what we want to move to is that end state where you're actually securing, you can do it at, with speed and scalability, and everyone has an understanding of what's actually being accomplished with this. Because if you're going to do something like uh, dynamically group workloads or utilize tags, it's got to become a part of the culture of how you actually utilize the infrastructure. And what that leads to is being able to say, well, we can secure our workloads faster. We can make this a part of our automation processes and really move that entire mindset forward into increasing capabilities of the business itself. So that's the role that we really try and play as 27 Virtual is to give you guys a starting point where we say, yeah, we want to take advantage of all that really cool stuff that VMware is doing. How do we make sure that it's the right way and that everything is designed properly, particularly for our organization? That's where we can come in and help you. We'll give you that starting point. We can help you uh, build out a security hierarchy and take advantage of the tools that are out there and available to you guys. And when it comes to things like NSX, you can count, us, count on us as being the experts. We've taught it in the classroom. We've done it in the field. And uh, Brian, if you want to take a look at the next slide here, we've got examples of customers that we've worked with where we've done this successfully. So like I said, you know, 27 Virtual has been doing this from the start. We've seen the early days of NSX and just the beginnings of uh, security growth from the VMware perspective. And now all of that is blooming and we want to be the ones and we are the leading partners in actually implementing these capabilities so that they work and are guaranteed. And we can show, for example, in an audit that everything that we want sectioned off via these capabilities is actually being done. So just one quick example of that in the real world, is uh, one of our customers, again, this was you know, in those early stages from a security standpoint, is Consulate Healthcare, where we actually went in 
and they said to us, hey, we know that VMware has these security capabilities. We have workloads out there that we literally cannot get rid of for legal reasons. There's sensitive patient information associated with these workloads, but they're sitting on really old virtual machines and antiquated operating systems. And we need a way to really lock them down and section them off from everything else. And that was a perfect play for taking advantage of the distributed firewall, building out a security hierarchy that started with those workloads so that we could allow only what needed access to those workloads to be able to get to them. And again, from those workloads out to what they needed, but otherwise they were absolutely and completely locked down utilizing those capabilities at the hypervisor. So, um, we, we put that into place. We did the flow discovery. We figured out exactly what those workloads needed and then implemented via policy, like you guys saw in the demo, uh, to specifically lock down those workloads. And in doing so, we can actually build out that hierarchy to allow them to expand those capabilities to the next workload, to the next workload, because it builds out that initial framework. And that's what we're really good at. So. You know, we, we want to be the ones that are here for you so that if you have any questions or if you uh, are looking at, hey, this is really cool. How do I get this started? You can come to us. You can start to ask those questions. We can put together some plans for you guys, build out those designs and help you implement the technology that you've just seen today. So I think what we can do now is actually uh, open it up a little bit for some question and answer. But before we do, uh, I just want to let you know that if you do want to get in contact with 27 Virtual, that we can do those networking and security assessments. So we have tools that can allow us to get a feel for what's going on in your network and give us a better idea of what the flows are that you have so that we can start to build out that initial plan. When it makes sense, we can do POCs and actually give you guys the hands-on ability in your own environment to start to play with this, especially from a security perspective. It's something that we can do fairly easily. So if you're interested in that, please definitely reach out to us. Uh, we also specialize in B2T migrations. We can do customized workshops and it's easy to engage with us through the credit transfer program. So if you do have any uh, VMware PSO credits sitting around and this is something that you're interested in, you can actually use those with us when it comes to security with VMware. So uh, before we get into our Q&A, I just wanna remind you guys that we have the exit survey out there so that when this Zoom window closes, it'll pop up in the browser to fill out the survey. Please, please do. I mean, you have a pretty darn good chance of winning a Amazon gift card based off of just the, the attendance that we have. So your odds are pretty good. Please fill out that survey. It makes a big difference for us. And if you wanna get in contact with us, again, my name is Andrew Grismore. Our main sales contact is brent.kaplan at 27virtual.com. Also feel free to visit our website, 27virtual.com, where we have multiple of these different kinds of webinars. You can actually go back and watch from what we've done previously this year. But um, other than that, we're going to have some time here for questions and uh, feel free to type them in the Q&A section. And if it makes sense, uh, I can start to unmute some mics so that we can have a little bit more interaction here. But thank you guys so much for attending. It means a lot that you give us your time and we can definitely see that there's some really cool stuff coming out from the VMware side when it comes to security and it applies to pretty much everybody. So thanks again. Thank you VMware. Thank you, Brian, for presenting with us today. And we'll open it up to some of that Q&A. So feel free to type it in the Q&A section in the chat. Hey, uh, Andrew, I got a question. Sure. So is there any special consideration around customers that have like um, DMZ environments or PCI type environments? Well, yeah, I mean, you saw you saw that a little bit in the demo, but yes, I mean, we can build policy. Um, you know, there's this concept of a DMZ anywhere where we can make it so that by utilizing these software tools, it's not as necessary to do things like air gap or have things on separate hardware. Um, you know, you can actually prove and audit the fact that the capabilities that are provided by VMware in the context that you saw in the demo actually provide everything that you need from a DMZ 
a logical separation standpoint or a PCI logical segmentation. You can do all of that utilizing the capabilities that we saw in the demo today. And, and what do you see customers doing? Who, who's actually within organizations? What what team ends up actually doing the the actual microseg work? Is it the is it the network team? Is it the cybersecurity team? Is it the sysops team? Who's doing the actual microsegmentation? Do you see? Yeah, so that that's another good question, and it it's interesting because you know as we reach out to you guys, uh, all, of, all the attendees that are here today, you know that this is a webinar that's that's a VMware 27 virtual webinar. So a lot of times what we'll see, and e even when I go to do these kinds of pre presentations at a VMUG event or whatever it may be, uh, it's usually the VMware team that comes to these kinds of events. But more and more, especially as we talk about security, as we talk about NSX, this conversation really needs to be shared with as many branches of the organization as possible. So that includes networking, that includes security, that includes the VMware team. And ideally, ideally what we're gonna see is an understanding and a conversation that happens between all of those teams so that there can be uh, you know, one or two people across the board that have an understanding and permissions to go in uh, and at least view what's happening in the distributed firewall. You know, uh, this is a security tool. So usually we would want the security team to be the ones that are involved in actually building policy, but I've seen it go a couple of different ways with customers. The main thing we don't want is that hot potato of security saying, hey, this is on the VMware team or this is on the network team. We don't want to touch it that misunderstanding can go away as long as you take the time to really learn what the capabilities are and have a uh, crosstalk among your teams to allow for successful imp implementation. And then we get the team selected to do the work. And then how do we make it easy for teams to implement the solution? What's the, what's the magic button to, to make it so that it's um, something you can do pretty easily? Like yeah, how do they I mean, how do they implement it? The biggest key is just going to be understanding and having visibility into the flows of your environment. And you know, you already saw some of that uh, in the demo, but there's additional tools out there like vRealize Network Insight that give you a really solid idea and foundation of what traffic is actually out there and an understanding for anybody to log into that tool and um, and get a feel for what's actually happening, how rules are being implemented, uh, what workloads are affected by those rules and where those rules come from in accordance with the flows that were originally viewed. So the more visibility you can have and the, the better understanding everyone can have of, of what you're trying to accomplish is going to make the use of this much more success, successful. I mean, what I can tell you guys is that from going around the United States talking about vRealize Network Insight and talking about security from its infancy is that without the tooling that you get from the, the VRNI, from the hypervisor capabilities of firewalling and now the, again, IDS IPS capabilities that we get in from the VMware side, trying to accomplish securing your east-west traffic flows so that you can minimize the attack scope and stop that lateral spread is incredibly difficult with the traditional firewalling tools. So it just takes that, that moment of we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to focus on the functionality of the application itself and what it needs and then use the capabilities and tools that are provided by VMware to actually implement that segmentation east-west. And if I'm doing if I'm doing the security, is it is it disruptive? I mean, if I want to get out there and get NSXT deployed, is it like uh, do I have downtime or is there anything I have to be worried about there? Yeah, so that's one of the things that you know it's it, it's one of the reasons that a lot of customers will come to us is just how to get this started. So um, we looked at some of the capabilities within NSXT, and there are you know thoughts and concerns about what's going on with the NVDS or the normalized VDS. You know what are some decision decisions in terms of what we have to do in order to get workloads secured, and um, 
you know, there are some steps involved in that. It's not anything crazy difficult, but it is something that you want to get right the first time. So, um, you know, there are some considerations as to what it takes to get this started, but it's nothing, uh, nothing too bad. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in as, as well, guys, here from, from a pure play NSXT security point of view. As I mentioned early on in my presentation, the, the requirement of deploying overlays isn't, isn't there. Um, we, we have the ability to consume and, and purchase just security capabilities, meaning you can leverage your existing VLAN infrastructure. So as Andrew says, the, the quickness or the speed to value is going to be much simpler and much quicker with just a security only play within a sex team. Yep, keep those questions Thanks. coming in the, the question and answer section and uh, we'll read them out. And, and I think we've got a couple others here that have come in. I'll just, I'll just read one of them here. All of my NSXV distributed firewall rules can be migrated smoothly with NSXT migration. Any special considerations? You want to, you want to take that one there, Andrew? Yeah, I'll, I'll feel, uh, feel free to take that one. Yeah. So that's an interesting question. And the answer to that is it depends. So it depends on exactly how you have your membership membership set up for your distributed firewall groups in NSXV. Um, I did mention that 27 virtual, we actually have a specific group of people that we like to call our NSXV to T migration task force. And we specialize in helping customers get moved to NSXT. So, um, it just depends on what exactly you're doing with your NSXV rules. A lot of it is compatible and can be migrated directly over. Some of it um, you can't do um, in T or it just looks a little bit different. So you might have to shift it around just a tad to make it look like what you had in NSXV. And then um, uh, it's important to remember if you're doing any identity firewall rules that you get those converted over in your NSXT environment as well. So that's a really good question. And we are one of the partners that's going to help a lot of uh, NSXV current customers get moved over to NSXT. So if you have any questions about V to T migrations, um, feel free to get in contact with us and we'd be happy to talk it over with you and just get a feel for what you've got going on so we can give you guys a better idea of where to go from here. Um, I know there's a lot of questions surrounding it, so um, we're happy to just have that initial conversation with you. And it might be a, an answer that's as simple as, yeah, you can use the converter tool. Everything you've got looks good and it's going to be no problem. And then uh, some of the other answers will be, well, you're doing a lot of really cool, complex things. It's going to look a little bit different in T and you're going to have X, Y, Z consideration. And we can help you get that work done as well. But um, yeah, very good question, Malik. It's it's. It's an interesting one. We just have to take a look at it and see what you've got. Absolutely. So one I'll take here about, uh, am I correct that we're not ripping and replacing our traditional firewalls with NSX? I will, uh, I will say short answer is yeah, pretty much. So what we're not talking about here is going out and replacing your traditional perimeter firewalls, which are, you know, allowing individuals access to, you know, Facebook messenger and, being that DMARC between the users and the internet. What we're talking about here is enhancing and improving your east-west segmentation within your data center. So for some customers that we work with, this may be that a combination of their existing internet perimeter firewalls and NSX to achieve a more robust solution for their data center. Or it could also be an enhancement to the perimeter and a removal of several layers of internal data center firewalls where you know you've had these air gap zones that are all separate separated by physical firewalls within the data center we can eliminate that cost and complexity by moving those those rules those traditional segmentation rules down into the hypervisor give you better visibility and also to prevent that lateral movement that those traditional firewalls won't uh, won't block yeah, ex excellent little distinguishing question there, Fernando. Thank you.
All right, awesome. Any other questions from you guys? Feel free to type them in the chat. I know we've got a few people hanging out. Feel free to, to pop a question in there. We'd be happy to answer it. Give you guys a, a couple minutes here to think if you have anything else to ask. Again, don't forget to, to fill out that survey. You get a chance to win. Give it one more minute or two here before we wrap up. Oh, I see another one popping in here. Uh, Brian, you want to talk about this one? Yeah, so the question is, the NSX distributed IDS IPS is included in NSXT licensing or is that a bolt-on? So the short answer for that question, John, is we have an advanced threat add-on license for either an existing NSX data center license or if you go with just the, the, uh, the regular NSX firewall security only license, it's an add-on to that. So. It's, it, it's something that's already got a license, we can add on, or if you wanna go straight there, we can, we can get you exactly to ATP from the beginning. Awesome, and then we have Matt asking, what are some of the newest features with 3.1? And maybe, uh, Brian, you can give us a little bit of insight as to you know what's what's in the works as we go to some of these newer versions. What are we looking for? What's coming? Any any peeps to the future you could give us? Yeah, so high level, I'll hit a couple of the the high points of three point one. So it added the IPS capability, the prevention capability to IDS that we already had in three point oh. Um, we had some. NSX federation enhancements and some additional uh, networking capabilities that were that were enhanced around things like multicast and some overlay enhancements. So uh, I, I would definitely suggest go out there, take a peek at the release notes. But those were the uh, some of the big items. I will uh, I'll say that the security only consumption model was also introduced in in three point one release. So uh, if you're if you want to do that, 3.1 is the vehicle to go do that. And then if we look ahead to kind of what things are going to, to look like, there'll be you know additional capabilities that are added on the network side. And then those advanced threat things that I mentioned around sandboxing, traffic analysis, you're going to start to see as, as we move forward in the future with those capabilities also becoming distributed and built into the hypervisor you know, further enhancing the, the capability of the platform. Fantastic. Um, any other questions before we wrap up? I know everybody's got those back to back to back Zoom calls. So try and get this wrapped up in the next three minutes or so. If you have any other questions, feel free to pop it in the chat. If you want to get with us and get with a, a more detailed conversation about what you can do from a security perspective or really anything surrounding your VMware environment modernization and services, feel free to get with us. Please definitely email brent.kaplan at 27virtual.com. You know, you could just say, hey, we want to chat about a Vita T migration and what our firewall rules are going to look like. And we'd be happy to get back with you guys. But other than that, um, I think we're good to go. All I can say is thank you so much for spending your time with us this afternoon. It means a lot to us. And thanks to VMware for helping us put this together. Of course, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Have Brian. a great day.